Oh, g'day there. I've talked about before how as a child, the best thing you could do was ride your bike to the video shop. Browse the horror section for an hour, pick out a good one you hoped, take it home and watch the whole thing. Um, those days are gone now. Kids just stream things. But I wanted to be old fashioned and probably a hipster. So I found my old video easy card. You remember Video Easy. Video Easy Movie Guarantee. So many copies of Kiss of Death, we guarantee it. Get it first time or get it free. It's another reason why... The choice is easy. Found one still open. Went down there. And rented... Not one. But three videos! We got Psycho 4, ironically named The Beginning. The Skateboard Kid 2. I didn't even know there was a Skateboard Kid 1. And the great find, Road Games. This is a great Aussie thriller from 1981, directed by Richard Franklin, written by Everett de Roche. Um, Quentin Tarantino loves this one. Shout out to Quentin if you're watching. Um, but we shouldn't give him too much of a compliment since it stars two Americans. Oh, and if you want to watch it yourself, the last time I did check, it was on YouTube for free. Well, free with ads. Is that really free? Let's read the plot. Synopsis. Taut thriller in the best hitch. Cock tradition with Stacy Keach, the voice of the Opie and Anthony show. Oh, it doesn't say that. With Stacy Keach. As a cross country trucker drawn into a web of intrigue surrounding a series of highway murders. He becomes not only a suspect, but the potential victim when he picks up an attractive and mysterious hitchhiker, Jamie Lee Curtis. 1981, and it's in colour. Running time, a hundred minutes. Starring Stacey Keach as Quid and Jamie Lee Curtis as Hitch in Road Games. Um, at the time, and maybe even now, a lot was made of planting two American actors into an Australian film to help it sell overseas. Like, couldn't they find some good Aussie actors for those roles? Yeah, but that's not what it's about. Like, we're all human beings. Yeah, there's great Aussie actors. Um, but Jamie Lee Curtis, great actress. Stacey Keach, there's none better. So this is just their story. And two Americans meeting on the Nullarbor plane. Yeah, it could happen. I've met Americans in Australia. And they tend to group together. Not through segregation, but because they speak the same language. Yankee. It was produced by Richard Franklin and Bob B. Taylor. Written by Everett DeRoche, from a story by DeRoche and Franklin. Directed by Richard Franklin. Richard Franklin directed one of my favourite films that I loved growing up. Psycho 2. He made it like a Hitchcock film. And I knew this as a 10 year old boy. I'm like, this wasn't made by Hitchcock, but they're trying. And it's better than Psycho. Uh, the house is older. Norman Bates has a new lease on life. I'll talk about Psycho 2 another time, but same director. Um, Richard Franklin was a devotee of Hitchcock. They became friends before the great director died. Just a little info on that director there. Brian May did the music to this. Not from Queen. But the... But the music is a... Uh, 
militaristic, um, throtting, adventurous sound with the harmonica and the overall theme of good triumphing over evil, at least trying to. So Casey Steech, I mean Stacy Keach, plays a truckie named Pat Quid. Um, he's hauling trucks um, all across Australia. Um, he, he drives a truck that doesn't make him a truck driver. His only companion, Boswell, a dingo that he bought a few years ago. Um, normally their days consist of playing road games. You know, plant, animal, mineral, I spy. But the film opens with trash cans outside of a motel in Melbourne when Quid pulls up with Boswell. They see a green van also pull up with a man and the woman hitchhiker that they had seen earlier. Then they started to think maybe they should have picked her up. Now he's got her and boy does he have her. He strangles her with guitar wire. And then you know this movie is going to be intense. The next morning around 5 a.m. Boswell is sniffing around those trash cans and then Quid looks up and sees the man from the dark green van looking out his window watching the uh, trash collectors come and pick up the trash. Something's not right. It's a chilling scene because you start to escalate the theories in your head. Why is he waking so early to watch the trash being taken away? Um, this reminds me of the garbage can scene from The Burbs, which Joe Dante directed almost a decade later. Another one of my great films growing up. Um, it's great to see the roots of inspiration in road games for all these other classics that I watched much later. Um, it all stemmed from this. I think this was a great influence on a lot of directors. Not only Tarantino, Joe Dante, but John Dahl, who directed Joyride that we talked about a little while ago. Another great summer road trip movie. But back to road games. So Quid picks up a shipment of pigs. Um, he's pushing pigs to Perth now, um, across the vast Nullarbor, an isolated road, which <laughs> must be said, a lot of tourists have disappeared on. Um, foreigners think the deadliest things about Australia are the spiders, snakes, sharks, but no, it's the vast wilderness of nothing that can swallow you whole. Um, I like how it starts off in Melbourne, a very sophisticated urban city full of civilization. And then slowly he goes out on his own, crossing Australia. And the characters we meet along the way, it kind of has a trouble with Harry kind of feel with these quirky characters popping up from time to time. It has dark humour, but the chilling thriller still remains a prodding escalation of suspense. I don't think Hitchcock got to see this one. I think he would have enjoyed it a lot. Um, the dark green van passes Quid after he hears a radio report of a hand being found in Queensland and a leg being found in New South Wales or vice versa. So these body parts are appearing across the country, but police say they're not connected. But we're starting to think they are. When the dark green van passes him, he sees that the hitchhiker isn't with him anymore. And then he sees a esky lunchbox where the gloved driver puts his hand on as if to protect it. Now we have our MacGuffin. What's in the lunchbox? We don't want to know. Um, he passes another hitchhiker a woman in a white hat, very famous scene where she has to hold her white hat as the truck zooms by as her thumb doesn't 
gain a hit. She is, of course, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, great actress. Um, her name's Hitch in this, or Pamela. Um, her father is a diplomat in Canberra, probably an American ambassador. It'll explain the accent. He eventually picks her up, and then they start to wonder about the driver of the dark green van and his suspicious activities, especially when Quid witnesses him bearing something out in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere, to hide something. You could draw that conclusion. It's a high-octane thriller shot on the beautiful landscape of Australia, which is also its terror. It's the great, uninhabitable, desert-lit, isolated areas, especially on the Nullarbor. I'm sure tourists disappear there all the time. Be careful. Stick to the coast. Then you only have to worry about sharks. This is a great film. It's like rear window on wheels with escalating suspicion and misdirection. Quid finds the dark green van abandoned eventually. He opens up the lunchbox and finds a sandwich, cake, fruit. It's just his lunch. Nothing terrifying. But when he drives off in his truck, the back door isn't closed all the way. Someone has been inside. He goes inside and there's one extra pig hanging up that shouldn't be hanging up. <laughs> Terrifying. The light flickers. Amazing. Um, earlier, there's another great shot where he goes to the roadhouse to call the police about the dark green van suspicious activity and there's like a 360 degree shot of the camera just panning around as Quid's yelling on the phone trying to communicate while the other cowboys are trying to play pool and play a playboy um, t -t -t not vending machine, pinball machine just great it shows more of his isolation as a stranger which is kind of good that he's an American um, perhaps they would believe an Australian truckie better. Well, those are my thoughts on road games. Go and have a watch. And next week, we'll be watching The Skater Board Kid 2. Just kidding, we're not going to be watching this. I just thought this was a potential lost media. Like, who's going to hang on to their copy of this? Well, besides me. But, go watch it yourself. Wonderful film. It flies by, or a hundred minutes of it. Feels like it only goes for 50 minutes. That's your bang for buck. And you don't have to ride your bike all the way down to Video Easy. Why, you could just watch it on YouTube for free until they take it off. That's why physical media is always better than streaming services because they can't take it away from you. Like they're trying to take away automobiles from you. Listen, we have internal combustion engines at the moment that run on gasoline. You have freedom. There's gas stations everywhere. Sure, they can shut off the gas supply, but that would take, logistically, that would take so long. So they're slowly bringing in electric cars and driverless cars. Can you imagine a more nefarious, topia society than cars that just take you where you should go, like work or to government offices, police stations? No more freedom of the road. No more road games. Hang on to your car for as long as possible. Take care of it, okay? Good. See you next time when we talk about The Skateboard Kid 2.